Well, hello there. Today, we're gonna make a cauldron cup. First thing I'm gonna do, I have this, I have some wedged clay. It's enough to make the cup, and, I'm, and the cup is gonna have a little lid. So I'm gonna cut off a chunk that is big enough to make the lid so that it is the same wetness, the same texture and stuff as the cup is made out of. When you make a lid, you want it to dry at the same rate and start at the same rate. So that's one of the things that I do. So then I'm gonna center this clay. Now, Again, I got some of that recycled clay that's a little stiff. So we're gonna do a little bit of coning up and down first to get it kind of all one slightly softer texture here. somebody asked me to make a cauldron a while back and I played around with it a whole bunch and I came up with a technique that I really enjoy um, so I'm going to show you that um, that um, in my opinion makes it pretty easy to make a little cauldron cup so I'm going to slow down the wheel and I'm going to show you so I've centered it let's clean off the slip off the edge. So I've centered it like this with this sort of swoop out and this is actually important this part this is usually a bit wheel trim that off not this time we're gonna leave it this time around so it's important to have that if you normally center without that being there in this case you need it that's part of the technique of making the feet part of the piece. So we're going to open up. Let's see. Then we're going to pull out some floor. There we go. Now, the inside of this cauldron, we want it to have a reasonably round inside like an actual cauldron does but I'm gonna go ahead and compress the bottom but I'm not gonna make it real wide where I've compressed it and then I'm gonna pull a little bit more round so we're looking for a sort of a round bottom So, normally I would try to push underneath the shoulder. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to kind of leave the shoulder the way it is. And I'm going to make a fairly tall uh, cylinder here that has a big chunk of clay at the bottom there on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to do one more pull here, I think. And uh, while I'm doing it, I'm going to push out a little bit at the bottom here so that I have a much more rounded bottom. And then I'm going to take my trusty red rib and I'm going to compress the edges of the walls and kind of reshape it so that the bottom of my little cauldron here is rounded. And then I'm gonna take, again, the way that I typically do, and I'm gonna make sort of a pot belly, but 
I'm going to leave that little rim of clay at the bottom. So I'm going to make it come out here, but we're going to leave that little rim of clay. That's how we're going to put our feet in. And then I'm going to pull up here a little bit more. because the, one of the characteristics of the cauldrons that we're making, that's going to go in a little bit, so I'm going to collar in just a hair and leave the rim sort of out like that. Um, interestingly, this particular piece of pottery is quite easy to throw. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so we're pretty much done here. So we have this um, make the, the rim a little bit more upright because it's hard to drink out of a rim that tips out like that. But other than that, we're basically done. So we've, we've created this shape that goes, I, well, I think that maybe, maybe I'm going to push out this bottom a hair more. Just a little bit. Get a little more pot belly than it has now. I like that shape a little better. All right, so I'm gonna clean up this edge. So, okay, this is what the inside looks like. I don't know how well you can see that. That's what the side, and sort of the profile looks like. So, oh, I should measure. We should measure. Oops. So, we're gonna take our trusty caliper and we're going to measure the inside kind of part way down because this lid is going to be strictly decorative. So I have taken the little chunk of clay that I cut off the top and I have re-wedged it into sort of a ball so that it will be easier to center. Clean up that vat. Ah, that didn't work. And we're going to center this. Centering small amounts of clay requires the same technique, but it, it's a little harder because bluntly there's less of it. So we're going to cone up and down a couple times and in this case we're going to make this fun lid will not be particularly functional. That's important. Let me check to make sure I got the right measurement here. Yep. We need a lot bigger round than that. But this is not going to be a particularly functional lid. It's just going to sit in there because it'll be cute. There's no other purpose to this but cuteness. Well, that's not entirely true. My son and I did do a test and we found out that it does keep quite a bit of heat in. So once you've got it centered, you're going to push it out wide, kind of like you would for a small plate. There's no opening in any normal sense because I'm not going to pull any walls. I'm just going to scoot clay out so that it's big enough. The only goal here is to make a disc that is big enough. Yeah, that's pretty close actually. That'll probably do. So, if you make it too big you can always very carefully trim it off. Um, in this case it's just barely too big so I'm just going to uh, re-flatten it back a little bit and leave it at that. So it doesn't the um, 
the the lid here, this lid piece. We're not going to change the shape until later. We're literally going to cut this off the bat tomorrow, probably. Hey, how are you? All right. Here we are. We have our, our the beginnings of our cauldron. Oh, there's a hair there. Huh. Deal with that in a minute. Um, beginnings of our cauldron. And we're going to trim the feet in, and then we're going to put the lid, and create the lid for it. So the first thing oops, that I'm going to do is we're going to trim the bottom. So I want to quickly center our piece here. So I have never really learned the... Um, the slapping technique that you see some that I don't. So I use this technique. I just put my finger here and very carefully pay attention to where it's less touching, basically, and work until it's pretty good. You can hold the pot down with lid like this. So I'm going to push kind of hard, hard enough to hold it down but let it spin around on your finger. So we're going to trim a little bit of this edge off here. And then the really important thing we got going is we're going to mark where we're going to put our three little feet. So I have a, a square of paper you can make you can buy things that measure sixths and things of circles, but I'm cheap, so you can make one out of paper. You just fold a square, you fold it in half, then you fold it in thirds, and now you have, you know, six spots. So all you gotta do is find the middle. Let's see, there's the middle right there. And then I'm gonna take my pin tool. Look, I clean my stuff. I was feeling very motivated. I'm gonna mark the six. And if you just push um, fairly hard, it will mark through. Oh, I only need three. I don't know why I'm making six. We will eliminate <laughs> three of them. Oops, got too many. All right, so I'm gonna pick this one and I'm gonna make it kind of double wide. I'm gonna measure how wide I think that foot should be. I'm gonna make it, you know, kind of, I don't know, maybe half an inch. And then I'm gonna move around here and I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Oops, make it straight. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. All right. So we have a fair bit of weight in the bottom, and that's intentional. And the next thing we're going to do, but it does work. I don't have a Giffen grip. They're too spendy. I don't have that kind of money right now. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a circle inside here and I'm going to cut it actually sort of reasonably deep um, and then I don't like that tool as much as this one um, I'm going to trim the bottom here up um, a fair bit actually and like the bowl that I trimmed before I'm gonna aim at trimming deeper as I get closer to this circle because I want the bottom of the pot 
lot to follow the inside because that's what the cauldron looks like, right? Part of what I want is to take out enough out of the middle so that I can glaze the bottom of my cauldron black. So I'm going to trim out, you know, an eighth of an inch or more of clay at least so that I have room. To let's see, then I'm gonna grab a bigger flatter tool so that I can sort of even get rid of my trimming rings. Don't really like those. I even cleaned my wheel off. I know it's shocking, but there it is. So, now, the thing that we're going to do, oopsie, next is we're actually going to take and cut down here with, I have a, an X-Acto knife, Ooh. and we're going to cut down on either side of where we want our feet to be enough so that we can remove a big chunk of clay here, leaving our three little feet. And this is why you leave this, you know, this edge out here so that you can leave yourself some feet. And then I'm going to take a trimming tool and I'm going to Trim pretty big chunks out actually here. This takes some guts. <laughs> it takes some, some, uh, you gotta be gutsy. I'm gonna go this way and do this side. And you literally are gonna trim so that this edge is about even with the outside and you're going to trim away the foot ring completely as well eventually. Um, I don't necessarily do it all absolutely at once but we're going to trim and trim and trim until we have a round bottom on our pot. So then I'm going to go this way. Trim the other edge. I'm not as good at trimming this edge over uh, this end. <laughs> it's a little harder work. Um, so we're going to trim right up to the cut area so that we don't trim off our foot, right? And you're going to smooth this out later, so you don't need to make it super neat. Right now we're mostly just removing a bunch of extra clay. So, all right. So I'm probably going to uh, edit out the... Um, you don't need to watch me do it three times, probably. So, now you're gonna spend, actually, this is a bunch of, like, hand carving, essentially. You're gonna spend a fair bit of time neatening this up so that you have a nice rounded spot. Oops the wheel off. I don't really need it at this point. And you can trim this edge so that you have 
a nice, oops. You want it to look like this was all cast round when it was made, all right? Because that's how they were made, or they are made. You want to pretty carefully at the end delineate the feet as being separate because it'll look better. So I go back after the fact and sort of trim around the actual feet. Then once you have that pretty much the way you want it, I take a sponge. Well, let's get rid of the trimming first. Let's turn on my wheel so that the trimming will go away. Once I have it trimmed pretty much how I want it, I'm going to go back with a sponge and I'm going to smooth off all the edges and sort of check one more time what else needs cleaned up. Um, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to trim it, you know, here I got a little bit, gonna, you know, sort of smooth up the feet themselves, make sure that they're kind of even-ish. Um, Try and smooth over those edges. Um, once you have smoothed over the edges, so now you want to look and see, you know. Yep, we're good. All right, so now the next thing we got is we got our lid that we have to clean up. So I'm gonna set my pot down here. I also need to make handles, you know, little chucks for the sides. But first, I'm gonna undo the lid. All right, so my lid is sort of dry to the touch, solid enough to to cut off, but it's still soft enough to reshape. So, here we are, we have this lid. This, this side that you threw is gonna be the top of your lid. So this is what you're gonna do. What, what I'm gonna do, what to do. How about that? You take this and you set your lid like this and you tap down in the middle. You sort of tap down very gently. You can kind of push a little bit. Oops. You want to reshape it into that dome lid that goes on a cauldron, right? And then you pick it up and you can see here we are with our little dome lid that would fit perfectly on our little cauldron, right? So, so you want to make sure that it's nice and neat and clean. If your lid is a little bit too thick, you can Stick your pot down, trim this edge if it's too thick. And I want to make sure that it, it um, is the right shape. And that's the big thing you're doing is you're turning your pot effectively into a slump mold so that you can mold your, your piece to fit it. Um, so okay, I have 
my little wad of clay here and I'm going to re-wedge it a little bit and I'm going to make two little handles for the sides of this cauldron cup. Um, so I'm going to pull a very, very thin uh, handle. I'm going to move this out of the way because you know, and I know, that pulling handles makes a mess. It's wet and it's kind of splatters water everywhere. So we're going to pull out a handle. The reason to pull it instead of rolling it is that a pulled handle is more durable than a rolled one. Um, if you'd rather roll it, you sure can. I have. But in this case, I figured I'd, I'd go ahead and pull it. And here we are. We're going to take this that we've pulled and we're actually going to clean it, not just clean it off with a sponge, but I'm going to flatten it out with a sponge because I actually want um, a thin sort of slender. So I'm continuing to pull slightly with my sponge, right? And I'm going to cut it. We're going to need two little handles for the side and one little tan one little lug for the top. So I'm going to cut one and then I'm going to measure. So I have two. Those should be about long enough. They're a couple inches long. That usually is about long enough for this kind of handle. It's just going to be a little single finger loop handle. And then I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to use my sponge. I don't want to make it even skinnier. This is going to be the, the loop that goes on the top. Oops. And I want an even skinnier thing on the top, right? Because that's kind of a tiny little loop that would go on the top. So... There we go. So, don't need much for that top bit. All right. So if, if your cauldron is a little too sticky to just set your lid there, you can put a piece of plastic over it. Sometimes I do that. So, and I'm gonna set this on here. Oops, I'm gonna set this on here so that it actually sits here. And then I'm going to take my little, my little loopy thing that I've made for my top and I'm going to stick it on there. So I'm going to, we'll use, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, I'm going to set it on here um, so that I can tell and I'm going to mark where I want it to sit, right? And then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to score slip and score these edges. My handle is pretty damp, so I'm less worried about that. But I want some slip here so that it really sticks when I put it on there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it down. And I'm going to stick it on pretty, pretty well, actually. I take my fingernail and I smooth out that edge, right? And then I clean it up. Now I can tip this off my lid. It's stuck on there pretty well. And I'm gonna let my lid dry to leather hard. Well, a little more than leather hard, upside down, right? So now I have these two handles and again, Normally, if it was a big handle, I would let it dry and be and worry about it. Um, it's even a little long, isn't it? Um, make sure they were dry enough so that they would stay the shape that they were. But with a little tiny handle like like this one, you don't have to worry about that quite as much. So. I'm going to 
pick where I want my handles to be. So I'm going to set it in the middle here and I usually kind of pick it by looking at the corners of the bat since I'm doing two. Right. So then I'm going to take where I'm going to put my my handles and put them right here. So I'm going to mark that spot. So I'm going to put one handle here and one handle down here. So we're going to put these little handles on because while normally the, the little loop on the side would be um, less than that, but the goal here is to actually make this a semi-usable finger loop handle that you could pick it up with one finger if you wanted. We're going to put it on about like that, right? So. I'm going to take, oopsie, I'm going to take and I'm going to score right here on the rim or right, right below the rim and then kind of right below here. That's maybe an inch apart, I guess. Should be enough to stick your index finger when you're done, even after it's fired, which hopefully will be that big. And then I'm going to very carefully stick that on there. And you can sort of, once you've got it, the benefit of putting it on really wet like this, you can, um, once you've got it stuck on there, you can change the shape of the loop, which I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a little rounder and clean up the inside a little bit, right? And then I'm going to do the other one and try and make it match. <laughs> it's a frame with all of that. Sorry about that. So here we are. Here we are with our... Let's tip the lid over just so we can see what it's going to look like. There's a lid, there's a cauldron, 